those of you who don't know me, I have been working uh, at Red Hat for about uh, closing in on five years. Um, and I work in the delivery team. And um, so a lot of what I do is around building and uh, making releases happen. And um, so I've, I've been uh, working in um, the forming community and uh, I've worked a decent bit with our Jenkins. And so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit today about how to use it. Um, and so, yeah. Um, and so let me go over what this presentation is. Um, so it's an overview of how we use and configure Jenkins. And so um, that is a very opinionated use um, in that we have probably a very different use case than a lot of other communities or um, any sort of software project kind of has. So it, ours is going to be a little unique, but some some pieces are going to be able to be used other places. Um, it's going to tell you about where our job configs are kept, um, what code we use to make a job, and best practices we generally try to employ when making jobs. Um, and please feel free to ask any questions during this or whatnot. Um, and if I don't see it, somebody please um, just uh, tell me. Um, but also what this presentation is not, it's not an overview of all of our Jenkins infra. Um, there's a lot more I could talk about about that, but I feel like just giving you information about how to explore and kind of think about how um, jobs actually get on Jenkins, I think is a little bit more important. And so what is what I'm going to be trying to focus on. And this is not about all forms of Jenkins. Jenkins is an enormous tool and um, is more information than you need and more information than we could go over in 30 minutes here. So um, yeah. Um, so just a little bit about what is Jenkins. If you have not kind of uh, worked with Jenkins before, it's an open source automation server. Um, so this just means that it kind of is able to be a workhorse to run any sort of um, workflows that you need it to. Um, it's written and maintained by CloudBees, which is another Raleigh company, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, it's got an extensive plugin environment. Um, and it, it is, when I say extensive, it's massive. And um, it is, uh, has a very large community. Um, it lets you automate complex workflows, pipelines via jobs, um, and it's very customizable. Um, it lets you be able to kind of make whatever kind of pipelines you want and um, let you kind of tailor it to your workflow and what your needs are. Um, what do we use Jenkins? What do we use Jenkins for? Um, so a lot of what we use Jenkins for are things like building packages on Co for Koji, um, running installation upgrade test scenarios for form versions, um, and 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 more things like that. Um, a lot of kind of background things that you may not normally see, or sometimes you do. Maybe you'll see kind of um, a job failing, and you'll see something in discourse saying something around that. Um, those are the kinds of things that we're running. Um, but yeah. How do we define and configure jobs? Um, we use a tool called JJB, or Jenkins Job Builder, which uses YAML files to create and configure jobs on Jenkins. Um, to use this, your Jenkins needs JJB, a JJB plugin, but we've got that. Um, and so the nice parts about JJB are it allows us to be able to um, make our job configurations before we use them and also save them in source. And so that way, say a catastrophic failure happens or something, we can get these jobs back on to Jenkins fairly quickly and easily. And so that's really nice. And then it also allows us to collaborate on these jobs without having to make constant changes in Jenkins itself, um, which is a good thing too. Um, you can find where we keep our um, JJB jobs. Um, they're in form infra. 
they are kind of under a um they are hard to find um but we do have a um hard link to um it here ci it won't work on uh github but if you are cloning this and you are there in uh, your directory, you can go to it that way. Um, but I also tried to leave links behind so that if you're coming back to this presentation, um, you'll be able to find the kind of things that you'll need. Um, and um, just as a note, this is also, this is one is just for uh, our foreman Jenkins instance. We also use a CentOS one and if you need to see uh, things for that, we've got it under the CentOS.org one under this Jenkins job builder. Um, but yeah, so um, just a little primer on JJB and kind of like how to look at it. Um, so this is a this is a job this is a jobs configuration with YAML. Um, this specific one, Foreman Nightly RPM pipeline. Um, the name is just to define what the job's name is, obviously. Um, project type sandbox are kind of going to be the normal boilerplate. Um, you don't have to worry about any of that, but they just need to be there. Um, so then this trigger thing right here is just an example of a configuration that we're making to this job. And so for example, with this trigger, um, this will make it so that the job is run at this time. Um, it's kind of like um, making a cron job or something like that. Um, and there are lots of other ways to configure jobs throughout this or with, with JJB. This is just one example. Um, I'm just trying to show you a little bit more so that if you do look at something like JJB, you're not going to be completely like lost. Um, and then this DSL is where we include kind of the logic of the job where um, actions are actually run. And so we try to uh, put these into smart places. Um, for example, this top one is just a bunch of variables that we're using in it. And then uh, these are, sorry, these are groovy files. I have another slide for this. Um, groovy. Is something we'll go over a little later, but these are where the actual instructions for the job are. And then um, just to show you a little bit more, these are variables that we just kind of have to put into, inject into our job. And then um, this is the pipeline, which is actually going to be doing the work of the job. And then these are kind of libraries. And I'll get into more later why we have so many libraries set up instead of just kind of having these pipelines that are kind of self-reliant or something like that. Um, just to talk a little bit about Groovy. Um, Groovy is a DSL that um, Jenkins uses. Um, it is uh, used in their pipeline instructions. It is Java syntax compatible because under the hood, Jenkins is actually a, written in Java, I think. And so I think this is an easier thing for them to be able to kind of get to work together, I guess. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but Jenkins also uses a very opinionated version, kind of like how Rails changes Ruby. Um, it uh, more just saying that so that if you go online and you try to look at um, normal Groovy code or whatnot, um, it's going to be a little different than the Groovy that you might see um, in our pipelines. Um, but I've also linked to the Groovy docs, so if you have any more questions about that. Um, pipelines. Um, so pipeline is what our jobs use. And so Jenkins has different types of pipelines. We are using one type at this point, mostly, um, called declarative pipelines. And so they have a very specific structure. Um, the pipeline gets defined, stages are defined, and you can make other configurations within that. Um, to try to show you what that looks like, um, so they need to define and start pipeline, um, define an agent. Agent really is more just what is actually running the job. 
Um, and then stages, and these stages all have steps. And so um, that lets us kind of break the jobs down into more manageable parts and also things that make it kind of easier to understand where it might have failed, where it might fail later. Um, but that is just kind of the format that we use now. Um, oops, sorry. Um, some example pipelines um, so that you can kind of see how it actually will look. Um, so, for example, this is uh, Foreman. This is the pipeline for the Foreman Nightly RPM. Um, so, as you could see with the original example, we have our normal pipeline. It defines an agent, but it doesn't need one at that time. Um, and then it gives some options. Um, these are kind of things just for quality of life when we're looking at them later. And then um, it actually goes into the stages and work of it. Um, and then also just so that you can fully see more of this, this is what the job will actually look like when it's com when it is made in T Jenkins, and it shows all the uh, pieces that we're kind of giving it. So this is with the variables and the libraries and everything. So it's just defining some variables, and then we actually get into what we had just seen with the pipeline. Um, and so you can see the stages, and then once we're done with that, you can see all the libraries that we have to try to kind of um, well, so that we can make the pipeline look a little simpler. Um, and then I just tried to link some examples of pipelines so that if you wanted to see more, you could kind of look at that. Um, so I just wanted to go over some good practices for pipelines. These are the things that we try to think about when we're writing pipelines for Jenkins. Um, Finding bugs in Groovy can be really difficult. And so because of that, we try to extract the logic out of it and use that with uh, tools that are easier to kind of debug. So we just, for, for what we do with Groovy, we're really more just kind of wrapping it around other tools so that we can use those instead. Um, so. Examples of that are um, playbooks with Ansible. So that'll lead you to um, forklift. A lot of the times, what we're kind of just trying to do in Jenkins is getting a forklift scenario to run or something like that so that it will, um, so that we can have that. And we. what's nice about that too is, is that then we can just run the forklift scenario locally. And so that way, um, we can try to kind of try and debug more easily with that. Hopefully, any problems that we would see on Jenkins, we would see by running locally. And so that that kind of makes that a little easier. Um, and that's why we also make these Groovy libraries, take advantage of these component parts. Um, Oval is another good example of a uh, tool that we use fairly often with Jenkins. Um, for example, with Oval, we'll use it to build um, packages onto Koji, and uh, so, you know, it is, once again, uh, Jenkins is easier when you're using it with other tools, and so that is that is what um, we try to do with Playbooks. Um, so just to show you what a actual Jenkins job looks like, um, so that you can see a little bit more of it. So as I showed you with the pipeline, this is the overview of the pipeline. Um, it shows you the steps that were defined within the pipeline. Um, the uh, one run of a job um, is, this is kind of shows what one, one run of a job is. And this will also tell you what the job is. Um, this is an example of a pass job. If you see all the steps are green, you're good to go. If there is a failed job, it'll be red at the point where it did fail. And so that also kind of lets you know more about you know, what is actually happening. And you can kind of drill down with that a little bit easier as well. Um, 
also go over troubleshooting job failures. Um, so one thing that I think maybe a lot of people might not know about is that there is a, a plugin on our Jenkins called Blue Ocean, and this generally provides more uh, readable output. Um, this one is not great, but um, just as an example. So um, here is here's the Blue Ocean's example of a failed job run. And so it will show you kind of the points where it failed. And then you, for all the points where it failed, you can press this, and it will take you um, to the point where it failed. Um, some of them are going to be a little more easily read than others. I probably should have tried to find a better one. I apologize. Um, but um, you know, just to kind of show you how you can use this, and if you're looking at it, this is this is how you can uh, try to find kind of errors and, and things like that. Um, checking job artifacts is also an important thing, um, and also trying to make artifacts whenever you're building jobs, because sometimes you could have output to different things. Um, or you could leave like a soft report or something like that in case you're um, testing an installation test or upgrade test or something like that. Um, you could leave that behind and then that may be make it easier to kind of understand what's going on or what's going wrong. Um, and then also if you have followed, you know, kind of the uh, way that we think about building these jobs, you could run the commands on your tools, or you could run the scenarios locally to see um, if the same failure occurs. And that way, you can kind of debug from there. Um, also, I just wanted to talk a little bit about making Jenkins jobs. Um, it, is, it is a fairly difficult process. And um, as Lucas uh, kind of pointed out, testing JJB changes is not a super fun or easy way to do it, especially if you don't have access to our the Jenkins uh, background of Jenkins. But it's not impossible. Um, you know, as I said, with the kind of way to approach actually making a Jenkins job, um, if you can take as much of kind of the groovy aspect of it and put it more into um, just running the tools and making sure that those are working. Um, that's kind of the easiest way to approach it, I think. Um, and then also, you know, if, if we are getting into problems with that, um, I think that there are people around in the community who are willing to help out and try to solve that with you. And if you do have a Jenkins job that you think you would want to make or you think that would be useful, Please bring it up on Discourse. Um, you know, we have these resources here. We're using them, but um, you know, we, as Evgeny said, sometimes we are blind to certain things, and so um, you know, I think having some fresh uh, faces and uh, you know more people wanting to use these to try to you know either see metrics or something would be great um, and really welcome. Um, also, whenever making other kind of jobs, looking through workflows of other jobs as examples. This is goes to JJB and to um, pipelines. Um, we have a lot of good examples about how we kind of do things, and it's easy to kind of copy that. And so I think that's a good way forward. And if you don't want to copy and you have to make something kind of new, um, you know, once again, we are here to help, and we would uh, like to work with you on that very much. Um, if you have any more questions on this, or you know, just anything else, you can reach me at any of these, um, and I would love to talk to you guys more. Um, but yeah, um, that is it for that. Um, do we have? Any questions? It's hard for me to tell because I think some of them were answered as, as they were going along. Has anyone any question that they may have posted that they would like to have answered?
I think I think I think most of it was sorry, most of it was uh, already answered, but uh, I just uh, would like to have some uh, session about uh, how to how to make the Jenkins job and especially how to uh, not how to write it, but how to debug it and how to test it if that would be possible because that's the hardest for me. I, I think that is super fair. And I think yesterday your uh, presentation really did, uh, I think I think you hit the nail on the head when you were saying that, that Jenkins is hard um, and there's a lot of moving pieces to it. And so I think I think you're on point with that. And I, I would be happy to, um, you know, maybe in a forming community today or, or community demo or something like that, I could try to do something with that. Um, but I think that's, that's a good, good thing to try to get done. Thanks. Thank you, Zach. Um, is there any more questions? We have a few minutes before the next presentation. And if not, or if you're watching this back at a later time, just feel free to write to us or to Zach, should I say, on the Foreman community discourse. And as I said before, we have a community demo on next Thursday. So if you'd like to join us, Zach, uh, I have a link for you. Um, with that, thank you very much. And I will stop the recording. Thank you all very much. <laughs>